Hi guys and welcome to part 36 of ASP.NET Core MVC tutorials and on this part we are going to add a new controller which we are going to use to manage everything related to the logins. So for that let's go to the controllers folder and inside this folder we add a new controller. We name this controller account controller. And on this controller we are going to use two very important classes which are the user manager and sign in manager classes. So let's first import the necessary namespace which is the ASP.NET Core identity namespace. The user manager class contains all the APIs that are needed to manage the user in the database, like for example, creating a user, deleting a user, or assigning some roles to this user. And the sign in manager contains all the APIs for the user to sign in, log off, sign up, etc. And to use them, let's create a constructor and inject both of them. So now let's start implementing all the methods that we are going to have on this controller. On this part we are going to implement the login methods and on the next one we are going to implement the register and logout methods. So let's start implementing the login method and for each case we need two action results. The first action result is going to redirect the user for example to the login page or to the register page and the second one is going to actually be used to handle the login or the sign up. For the first one let's write public i action result we are going to name this login and it's going to take as a parameter a string which we are going to name return url and this string is going to be used to redirect the user to a defined url after it has already been signed in so let's write in here return view let's create a new view model for the login for that we go to the view models folder and inside this folder we create a new view model and let's name this view model login view model we add the class and this view model is going to be very simple. It will have a username of type string. So we write public string username. It's going to have another property of type string, which is the password. And the last one is going to be of type string as well. And we are going to name this one return URL. And let's add some data annotations that we have learned from the previous parts. So in here we write that the username is a required field. We import the necessary namespace, which is the data annotations. And we write that the display name for the user is going to be name is equal to username. The same way we add for the password. The password is going to be required. So the same way we add the required data annotation. But for the user to not see the characters while they enter their password, we need to add another property, which is going to be of data type. So we write in here data type is going to be a data type of password and for the last one we don't need anything so let's go back to our controller and in the controller in here now we write a new login view model we import the namespace and the only property that we are going to assign on this case is going to be the return url property so we write that the return url is equal to the return url and from the login form, we are going to send back a post request. And for that, we are going to create an additional action. And to distinguish these actions from each other, we have already learned that since we are going to send from the form a post request, we can simply add in here HTTP post and we can start the implementation. So the first thing that we are going to do is that we need to check for the model state if it's valid or not. So we write model state dot is valid. And in case the model state is not valid, then we are going to return to the same view with the login view as a parameter. And before we log in, we always need to check if the user already exists or not. So let's first check if the user is valid. So for that, we write var user. Var user is equal to await. And we are going to use the user manager to check if we already have a user. So we write user manager dot find by name sync and for that we are going to use the login view model dot username property so in case we find a user so user is different from null we are going to use the sign in manager to sign in the user so for that we write var result is equal to await and we are going to use sign in manager dot password sign in async and here as properties we are going to write the identity user which is in our case the user that we just found 
and then we enter the password for this user and the password comes with the login view model so we are going to write login view model dot password and the next properties we leave them by default false so the result is going to either succeed or fail because we are trying to to sign in so here we try to sign in and we are going to check if the result was successful or not so for that we write result dot succeeded so in case that the user has been successfully signed in next we need to check if he has provided a return url so for that we write string dot is null or empty and inside here we write login view model dot return url so in case he has not provided one we are going to redirect him to the home page and when he has provided one then we are going to redirect him to the page that he is asking for and in case it has not succeeded what we have to do is that we have to display an error to the user and we do that by using the model state add model error and we display to him the error username password not found at the end we return him to the same view with the login view model as a parameter so on this part we created the login methods and on the next one we are going to create the register methods thank you for watching and see you on the next one